Okay, folks, today we're gonna be telling you a little bit about the salt and pepper shaker. Here is your template. If you're looking at the template wall, it's left to the left of it are the stools, and to the right is the template for the legs of the bedside table. So this is your salt and pepper shaker template, and I'm gonna make a few notes here in a moment about where you measure to, depending on what type of salt and pepper shaker you're making. So. All right, folks, when you jump into doing the standard salt and pepper shaker, you are going to look at making all your measurements and creating your cut list. So what I'm gonna do for this, since it's not based right on the edge, I'm gonna start with uh, at 10, which is essentially my zero. Then realize that this is gonna be a six inch long piece. So I'm gonna start with the length at six inches. And this will be for salt and pepper shaker. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill out this thing and you'll notice that I will measure this at two and a quarter wide, which is the same thickness of three pieces of three quarter, which is essentially what this is being created by, so you'll get a square at the end of it. So the width is two and one quarter. So since we're doing salt and pepper shakers and we're gonna vary the different colors, you'll essentially need three of each of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and do S and P, shaker, one light, one dark, right? So they're both gonna need to be two and a quarter by three inches. Don't forget to put your name on here. Period, one, two, three, four, five, or six, or whatever you are. And then you're gonna write out your tools required here as well. So for this, we're gonna need uh, a number of different tools. It'll depend on which shop you're working at, but um, you'll be learning about those through the video and you'll fill those out as you see the video, uh, which tools you'll need. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a quick project sketch of what we expect to finish with here. Man, look how fast he draws. He's crazy. And like I said, you'll make sure you have your tools required filled out. And then we're gonna get going. Uh, your teacher will give you your material and you'll roll on. All right, now before running these on the bandsaw, I checked to make sure I have a straight edge. There's no gap on this, so I'm gonna use that side on the bandsaw table against the fence. And similarly, I have a nice straight edge on this already. But if I didn't, I would take it to the fez tool. All right, so I'm gonna set the bandsaw my two and a quarter inch width and start running my pieces. Here we go. Okay, now that we're back at the track saw, we can go ahead and set it up for that six inch cut. Okay, now I've got my pieces. Got my pepper and my salt shaker. I'm gonna find the middle one of each of those. And I'm gonna use my template now. Line up my lines with the top and bottom. Okay. And I'm gonna trace this whole inside perimeter. And this section. And that's going to show me what I'm going to cut out of that middle piece. So I'm going to do that for both of them. Of course, to be able to get our scroll saw blade into our piece, you'll need to be drilling holes. I like to do one at each corner so it makes it easier on my turns. Those guys look ready for the scroll saw. All right, here we're at the scroll saw. Got my safety equipment on, always. And you'll remember, we have one light piece, one dark piece. We have already drilled our holes through, but when you get to the scroll saw, you're obviously not gonna be able to um, just enter right in. 
you just cut those holes in order that you can put the blade through the hole. So we're gonna loosen up the tension on this one. It just so happened the last person that used this had the teeth facing up anyway, so it wouldn't have been a very good experience. So we're gonna make sure to flip that blade around. We've got our two cutouts. Now notice, <clears throat> I made sure to stay inside the line if I did anything. I tried not to go outside that line because if we get too thin on this wall and later we have to sand down more than we thought, we just don't want to actually go all the way in there. And this should be quite a bit of space for carrying your salt and pepper. I think, you know, I don't know how many ounces, but maybe that's like four to six ounces worth of uh, salt that can fit in there, which is a pretty good amount. Should last you quite a while. Um, so <clears throat> that's that. You wanna make sure this doesn't get too thin as well because you want that cork stopper to be able to work for you and not, um, not accidentally break out too far on that end grain there. So overall, I think these cuts turned out nice. Now we're gonna go to the glue table. Okay, so here we are at the glue table. And as always, I like to get my clamps out and ready to go, about at the right height. And also, I like to always bring these uh, all the way up so that I'm not maxing it out and only getting one or two twists out of it. So, sometimes I'll just kind of say, okay, we're, yeah, this one's pretty close. Get a rough feel here, that's good. <laughs> and I'm making sure that they're all lined up the right woods with the right ones, okay, because we got two darks on the outside and one light on the inside of this one, and the opposite of this one, and there's our cutout pieces. So we should be ready to go. Um, check for alternating green. Make sure there's no sawdust holding you off from flush. This one I can tell already is going to need a fair amount of clamping pressure right there to get it having no seams, okay, but lies pretty flat. Check this one, and yeah, we're pretty good to go. Excellent, so having them laid like this, just like we did with the, would do with the speaker box, we're doing this with the <clears throat> salt and pepper shakers. You're only gonna wanna apply glue to this portion, because otherwise you will be and I'm hoping that glue will actually come. I think I just need to tighten this. Whew. Okay, glue came everywhere. Um, there we go. Now my glue bot should work. Okay, turn on the glue. All right, spread with your finger. Make sure it's on all the surfaces. And hopefully not too much towards the inside edge. Don't want wet glue sitting there when you go to load this thing with salt and pepper. And the better you line them, the less work you'll have on the, the tail end of things. Now that the glue is dried up, I'm going to put my salt and pepper shakers into a vise and get it ready for cleaning up. Uh, as I put my finger across here, I see that there's some rough edges from the bandsaw and also there are uneven surfaces because the glue joints are not perfectly flush. So I'm going to bring the jack by now to start smoothing it out. As you can tell, I am only using the jack plane on the edge grain. Make sure you never use the jack plane on the end grain because it will cause some issues and will make for uh, broken pieces. After I've used the jack plane, I go ahead and jump into using the sanding block. And this helps me to smooth out and um, get rid of any potential cuts that the jack plane may have made. All right, folks, 
<clears throat> so now we have gotten our salt and pepper shakers to the point where they're sanded, sanded on the top, bottoms, and now we are ready to put on the chamfer. So there are two different ways I'm gonna show you to create that chamfer or the line to uh, designate where the chamfer will be. So we're looking to do about a quarter inch over from the edges of each side of your block. So the first way you can do this is you can actually use your ruler or tape measure and measure over one quarter of an inch. Make your crow's foot there. Then connect the two crow's feet together using the straight edge of your ruler. And repeat as you go around to each side. So that gives you a nice quarter inch line. Another way that you can do this, uh, and I have created this little piece here for you. I've created basically a quarter inch piece and nailed it on top of another piece so that I can set it just like a little jig on top of here, press tight against the material, and then draw your pencil across. Essentially creating the same quarter inch mark. And then you repeat that for all the sides so that <clears throat> when you go to chamfer this, it will take off a quarter inch equally from there to there if you touch your lines. And it'll create a nice little bevel on there. And it'll look like this along the top. All right, folks, now we've got our, our lines going around the exterior edges here. I uh, have yet to do the ones on the top, so I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. So you can just set your sample on here and back your line across. So you'll see that they actually have perpendicular lines here. Now I've got all my marks here on the top and on all the edges. So it's about time for us to get going on the jack plane. So in order to do the jack plane, we wanna make sure that we mount this well into the vise here. And I find that the best way to do that is to mount it on the diagonal so that you can keep your jack plane pretty well level in order to make it happen. So got it in there, get it just about the way it ought to be. Make sure it's plenty tight and snug. And we're gonna grab <coughs> one of our jack planes and hopefully you've already done your safety video on this and you understand the instructions on this, but you wanna make sure you have hands both on the front of the knob and on the back and you're gonna do your best to apply even pressure all the way through and hopes to keep this as flat as possible. Okay, so <coughs> what we'll do is we'll take two strokes going this direction and then I'll reverse my direction and start pulling that direction just to even it out in case we don't have even pressure all the way along. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you a few sample strokes on this and so you can see, and then we'll speed it up so I can show you how to do all, all eight sides of these salt and pepper shakers. <laughs> Notice on the first few passes, you're just gonna have these small little coils and then they'll start to get bigger and bigger as you go. So the to that direction, I'm gonna try and put even pressure all the way through. And you'll see my coils are starting to get bigger. All right, folks, so I've Taking my first few passes here, and you can tell as I give you that side profile, we got a pretty nice chamfer there. And I just went right before my lines, I can probably sand the rest of it.
So you already started me going. <laughs> so you already saw me starting to go after putting the chamfer on the top edge here. And because it's end grain, like I said, we're not going to be able to take our jack plane and run it across the end grain here because that'll cause blowout. Um, instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use a file. And there's the flat side of the file, and there's an aggressive side and a smooth side on this particular file. You're going to want to start out with the aggressive side. And as you do it, you're going to want to make sure you're always moving upward. Because as you, if you were to pull downward, that same issue would occur where you would have uh, the grain blowing out on you. I like to have pressure up towards on both sides of the file, but notice the difference in the sound as I come down versus when I go up. Because it'll be, I'm putting pressure as I go up, and then I'm just letting it glide back down. It's still touching the material, but it's not really doing much work. So you can kind of hear that sound as I. So that's the idea there, and you're going to want to try and hit those lines, the one that you drew on the top and the one you drew on the side. So I have a little more work to do on this one as well. I'll be coming back around to that. All right, here we go. So after you have your pieces fully sanded out and chamfers on them, the next thing we're going to do is drill for the plug in the bottom. And in order to find center, you're going to measure the whole width and then divide that number by two. And you should be able to find out where the center is, both directions. Then once you've got your center point, go ahead and grab a half inch drill bit. And make sure, of course, that your material is solidly placed in the vise. And then start drilling and you'll be ready for your cork to be answered in there. So next, you get to draw the shape for the holes that the salt and pepper will actually come out of. Uh, a lot of people like to do the SMP, the salt and pepper, and that's what I did here. Other people just like to do straight lines. Once you've got your layout, go ahead and ask your teacher for the right drill bit, the drill bit that you'll need. It's actually a nail with the head off of it and it makes for a perfect size hole for the salt and pepper sugars. And there you go, you have a wonderful project on your hands. The last thing you can do is consider some way of finishing it. Nice job! Well done on those salt and pepper sugars.